The Railway Series. Written by the Reverend Wilbert Audrey. Read by the Thomas Cynic. The Railway Series. Number 1. The Three Railway Engines. Edward's Day Out. Once upon a time, there was a little engine called Edward. He lived in a shed with five other engines. They were all bigger than Edward and boasted about it. The driver won't choose you again, they said. He wants big, strong engines like us. Edward had not been out for a long time. He began to feel sad. Just then, the driver and fireman came along to start work. The driver looked at Edward. Why are you sad? he asked. Would you like to come out today? Yes, please, said Edward. So the fireman lit the fire and made a nice lot of steam. Then the driver pulled the lever and Edward puffed away. Peep, peep, he whistled. Look at me now. The others were very cross at being left behind. Away went Edward to get some coaches. Be careful, Edward, said the coaches. Don't bump and bang us like the other engines do. So Edward came up to the coaches very, very gently, and the shunter fastened the coupling. Thank you, Edward, said the coaches. That was kind. We are glad you are taking us today. Then they went to the station, where the people were waiting. Peep, peep, whistled Edward. Get in quickly, please. So the people got in quickly, and Edward waited happily for the guard to blow his whistle and wave his green flag. He waited and waited. There was no whistle, no green flag. Peep, 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 peep. Where is that guard? Edward was getting anxious. The driver and fireman asked the station master, Have you seen the guard? No, he said. They asked the porter, Have you seen the guard? Yes, last night, said the porter. Edward began to get cross. Are we ever going to start, he said. Just then, a little boy shouted, Here he comes! And there the guard was, running down the hill with his flags in one hand and a sandwich in the other. He ran onto the platform, blew his whistle, and jumped into his van. Edward puffed off. He did have a happy day. All the children ran to wave as he went past, and he met old friends at all the stations. He worked so hard that the driver promised to take him out again next day. I'm going out again tomorrow, he told the other engines in the shed that night. What do you think of that? But he didn't hear what they thought, for he was so tired and happy that he fell asleep at once. Edward and Gordon One of the engines in Edward's shed was called Gordon. He was very big and very proud. You watch me this afternoon, little Edward, he boasted. As I rush through with the express, that will be a splendid sight for you. Just then his driver pulled the lever. Goodbye, little Edward, said Gordon, as he puffed away. Look out for me this afternoon. Edward went off, too, to do some shunting. Edward liked shunting. It was fun playing with the trucks. He would come up quietly and give them a pull. Oh, 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 screamed the trucks. Whatever is happening? Then he would stop, and the silly trucks would go bump into each other. Oh, 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 they cried again. Edward pushed them until they were running nicely, and when they weren't expecting it, he would stop. One of them would be sure to run onto another line. Edward played till there were no more trucks. Then he stopped to rest. Presently, he heard a whistle. Gordon came puffing along, very slowly and very crossly. Instead of nice, shining coaches, he was pulling a lot of very dirty coal trucks. A goods train, a goods train, a goods train, he grumbled. The shame of it, the shame of it, the shame of it. He went slowly through, with the trucks clattering and banging behind him. Edward laughed and went to find some more trucks. Soon afterwards, a porter came and spoke to his driver. Gordon can't get up the hill. Will you take Edward and push him, please? They found Gordon halfway up the hill and very cross. His driver and fireman were talking to him severely. You are not trying, they told him. I can't do it, said Gordon. The noisy trucks hold an engine back so. If they were coaches now, clean, sensible things that come quietly, that would be different. Edward's driver came up. We've come to push, he said. No use at all, said Gordon. You wait and see, said Edward's driver. They brought the train back to the bottom of the hill. Edward came up behind the brake van, ready to push. Peep, peep, I'm ready, said Edward. Boop, boop, no good, grumbled Gordon. The guard blew his whistle, and they pulled and pushed as hard as they could. I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, puffed Gordon. I will do it, I will do it, I will do it, puffed Edward. I can't do it, I will do it, I can't do it, I will do it, I can't do it, I will do it, they puffed together. Edward pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever he could, and almost before he realised it, Gordon found himself at the top of the hill.
I've done it, I've done it, I've done it, he said proudly, and forgot all about Edward pushing behind. He didn't wait to say thank you, but ran on so fast that he passed two stations before his driver could make him stop. Edward had pushed so hard that when he got to the top, he was out of breath. Gordon ran on so fast that Edward was left behind. The guard waved and waved, but Edward couldn't catch up. He ran on to the next station, and there the driver and fireman said they were very pleased with him. The fireman gave him a nice long drink of water, and the driver said, I'll get out my paint tomorrow and give you a beautiful new coat of blue with red stripes. Then you'll be the smartest engine in the shed. The Sad Story of Henry Once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It went into a tunnel and squeaked through its funnel and never came out again. The engine's name was Henry. His driver and fireman argued with him, but he would not move. The rain will spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes, he said. The guard blew his whistle till he had no more breath and waved his flags till his arms ached. But Henry still stayed in the tunnel and blew steam at him. I am not going to spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes for you, he said rudely. The passengers came and argued too, but Henry would not move. A fat director who was on the train told the guard to get a rope. We will pull you out, he said. But Henry only blew steam at him and made him wet. They hooked the rope on and all pulled except the fat director. My doctor has forbidden me to pull, he said. They pulled and pulled and pulled, but still Henry stayed in the tunnel. Then they tried pushing from the other end. The fat director said, one, two, three, push, but did not help. Uh, my doctor has forbidden me to push, he said. They pushed and pushed and pushed, but still Henry stayed in the tunnel. At last, another train came. The guard waved his red flag and stopped it. The two engine drivers, the two firemen, and the two guards went and argued with Henry. Look, it has stopped raining, they said. Yes, but it will begin again soon, said Henry. And what would become of my green paint with red stripes then? So they brought the other engine up, and it pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever it could. But still, Henry stayed in the tunnel. So they gave it up. They told Henry, we shall leave you there for always and always and always. They took up the old rails, built a wall in front of him, and cut a new tunnel. Now Henry can't get out, and he watches the trains rushing through the new tunnel. He is very sad, because no one will ever see his lovely green paint with red stripes again. But I think he deserved it, don't you? Edward, Gordon and Henry Edward and Gordon often went through the tunnel where Henry was shut up. Edward would say, peep peep, hello. And Gordon would say, Boop, 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 serves you right. Poor Henry had no steam to answer. His fire had gone out, soot and dirt from the tunnel roof had spoiled his lovely green paint and red stripes. He was cold and unhappy, and wanted to come out and pull trains too. Gordon always pulled the express. He was proud of being the only engine strong enough to do it. There were many heavy coaches, full of important people like the fat director who had punished Henry. Gordon was seeing how fast he could go. Hurry, 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 he panted. Trickety truck, trickety truck, trickety truck, said the coaches. Gordon could see Henry's tunnel in front. In a minute, he thought, I'll poop, poop, poop at Henry and rush through and out into the open again. Closer and closer he came. He was almost there when crack. Weesh. He was in a cloud of steam and going slower and slower. His driver stopped the train. What has happened to me? asked Gordon. I feel so weak. You've burst your safety valve, said the driver. You can't pull the train anymore. Oh dear, said Gordon. We were going so nicely too. Look at Henry laughing at me. Gordon made a face at Henry and blew smoke at him. Everybody got out and came to see Gordon. Humph, said the fact director. I never liked these big engines, always going wrong. Send for another engine at once. While the guard went to find one, they uncoupled Gordon and ran him on a siding out of the way. The only engine left in the shed was Edward. I'll come and try, he said. Gordon saw him coming. That's no use, he said. Edward can't pull the train. Edward puffed and pulled and pulled and puffed, but he couldn't move the heavy coaches. I told you so, said Gordon rudely. Why not let Henry try? Yes, said the fat director. I will. Will you help pull this train, Henry? He asked. Yes, said Henry at once. 
So Gordon's driver and fireman lit his fire, some plate layers broke down the wall and put back the rails, and when he had steam up, Henry puffed out. He was dirty, his boiler was black, and he was covered with cobwebs. Oh, I'm so stiff. Oh, I'm so stiff, he groaned. You'd better have a run to ease your joints and find a turntable, said the fat director kindly. Henry came back feeling better, and they put him in front. Peep, peep, said Edward. I'm ready. Peep, 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 said Henry. So am I. Pull hard, pull hard, pull hard, puffed Edward. We'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it, puffed Henry. Pull hard, we'll do it, pull hard, we'll do it, pull hard, we'll do it, they puffed together. The heavy coaches jerked and began to move, slowly at first, then faster and faster. We've done it together, we've done it together, we've done it together, said Edward and Henry. You've done it, hooray, you've done it, hooray, you've done it, hooray, sang the coaches. All the passengers were excited. The fat director leaned out of the window to wave to Edward and Henry, but the train was going so fast that his hat blew off into a field, where a goat ate it for his tea. They never stopped till they came to the big station at the end of the line. The passengers all got out and said, thank you, and the fat director promised Henry a new coat of paint. Would you like blue and red? Yes, please, said Henry. Then I'll be like Edward. Edward and Henry went home quietly, and on their way, they helped Gordon back to the shed. All three engines are now great friends. Wasn't Henry pleased when he had his new coat? He is very proud of it, as all good engines are, but he doesn't mind the rain now, because he knows that the best way to keep his paint nice is not to run into tunnels, but to ask his driver to rub them down when the day's work is over. The Railway Series, number two. Thomas the Tank Engine. Dear Christopher, here is your friend Thomas the Tank Engine. He wanted to come out of his station yard and see the world. These stories will tell you how he did it. I hope you will like them because you helped me to make them. Your loving daddy. Thomas and Gordon. Thomas was a tank engine who lived at a big station. He had six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome. He was a fussy little engine, always pulling coaches about. He pulled them to the station, ready for the big engines to take out on long journeys. And when trains came in and the people had got out, he would pull the empty coaches away so that the big engines could go and rest. He was a cheeky little engine too. He thought no engine worked as hard as he did. So he used to play tricks on them. He liked best of all to come quietly beside a big engine, dozing on a siding, and make him jump. Beep, 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 beep. Wake up, lazy bones, he would whistle. Why don't you work hard like me? Then he would laugh rudely and run away to find some more coaches. One day, Gordon was resting on a siding. He was very tired. The big express he always pulled had been late, and he had had to run as fast as he could to make up for lost time. He was just going to sleep when Thomas came up in his cheeky way. Wake up, lazy bones, he whistled. Do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me. And he ran off laughing. Instead of going to sleep again, Gordon thought how we could pay Thomas out. One morning, Thomas wouldn't wake up. His driver and fireman couldn't make him start. His fire went out and there was not enough steam. It was nearly time for the express. The people were waiting, but the coaches weren't ready. At last, Thomas started. Oh dear, oh dear, he yawned. Come on, said the coaches, hurry up. Thomas gave them a rude bump and started for the station. Don't stop dawdling, don't stop dawdling, he grumbled. Where have you been, where have you been? asked the coaches crossly. Thomas fussed into the station while Gordon was waiting. Boop, 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 hurry up you, said Gordon crossly. Peep, 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 hurry yourself, said Cheeky Thomas. Yes, said Gordon, I will. And almost before the coaches had stopped moving, Gordon came out of his siding and was coupled to the train. Boop, boop, he whistled. Get in quickly, please. So the people got in quickly, the signal went down, the clock struck the hour, the guard waved his green flag, and Gordon was ready to start. Thomas usually pushed behind the big trains to help them start, but he was always uncoupled first, so that when the train was running nicely, he could stop and go back. This time he was late, and Gordon started so quickly that they forgot to uncouple Thomas. Poop boop, said Gordon. Peep peep peep, whistled Thomas. Come on, come on, puffed Gordon to the coaches. Pull harder, pull harder, puffed Thomas to Gordon. The heavy train slowly began to move out of the station. The train went faster and faster, too fast for Thomas. He wanted to stop, but he couldn't. Peep, peep, stop, stop, he whistled. Hurry, 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 laughed Gordon in front. 
You can't get away, you can't get away, laughed the coaches. Poor Thomas was going faster than he had ever gone before. He was out of breath, and his wheels hurt him, but he had to go on. I shall never be the same again, he thought sadly. My wheels will be quite worn out. At last, they stopped at a station. Everyone laughed to see Thomas puffing and panting behind. They uncoupled him, put him onto a turntable, and then he ran on a siding out of the way. Well, little Thomas, chuckled Gordon as he passed. Now you know what hard work means, don't you? Poor Thomas couldn't answer. He had no breath. He just puffed slowly away to rest, and had a long, long drink. He went home very slowly, and was careful afterwards never to be cheeky to Gordon again. Thomas's Train Thomas often grumbled because he was not allowed to pull passenger trains. The other engines laughed. You're too impatient, they said. You'd be sure to leave something behind. Rubbish, said Thomas crossly. You just wait, I'll show you. One night, he and Henry were alone. Henry was ill. The men worked hard, but he didn't get better. Now Henry usually pulled the first train in the morning, and Thomas had to get his coaches ready. If Henry is ill, he thought, perhaps I shall pull his train. Thomas ran to find the coaches. Come along, come along, he fussed. There's plenty of time, there's plenty of time, grumbled the coaches. He took them to the platform and wanted to run round in front at once, but his driver wouldn't let him. Don't be impatient, Thomas, he said. So Thomas waited and waited. The people got in, the guard and station master walked up and down, the porters banged the doors, and still Henry didn't come. Thomas got more and more excited every minute. The fat director came out of his office to see what was the matter, and the guard and the station master told him about Henry. Find another engine, he ordered. There's only Thomas, they said. You'll have to do it then, Thomas. Be quick now. So Thomas ran round to the front and back down on the coaches, ready to start. Don't be impatient, said his driver. Wait till everything's ready. But Thomas was too excited to listen to a word he said. What happened then, no one knows. Perhaps they forgot to couple Thomas to the train. Perhaps Thomas was too impatient to wait till they were ready. Or perhaps his driver pulled the lever by mistake. Anyhow, Thomas started. People shouted and waved at him, but he didn't stop. They're waving because I'm such a splendid engine, he thought importantly. Henry says it's hard to pull trains, but I think it's easy. Hurry, 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 he puffed, pretending to be like Gordon. As he passed the first signal box, he saw the men leaning out, waving and shouting. They're pleased to see me, he thought. They've never seen me pulling a train before. It's nice of them to wave. And he whistled, peep, peep, thank you, and hurried on. But he came to a signal, a danger. Bother, he thought. I must stop. And I was going so nicely, too. What a nuisance signals are, and he blew an angry peep-peep on his whistle. One of the signalmen ran up. Hello, Thomas, he said. What are you doing here? I'm pulling a train, said Thomas proudly. Can't you see? Where are your coaches, then? Thomas looked back. Why, bless me, he said, if we haven't left them behind. Yes, said the signalman. You'd better go back quickly and fetch them. Poor Thomas was so sad he nearly cried. Cheer up, said his driver. Let's go back quickly and try again. At the station, all the passengers were talking at once. They were telling the fat director, the station master, and the guard what a bad railway it was. But when Thomas came back and they saw how sad he was, they couldn't be cross. So they coupled him to the train, and this time he really pulled it. But for a long time afterwards, the other engines laughed at Thomas and said, Look, there's Thomas, who wanted to pull a train but forgot about the coaches. Thomas and the Trucks Thomas used to grumble in the shed at night. I'm tired of pushing coaches. I want to see the world. The others didn't take much notice, for Thomas was a little engine with a long tongue. But one night, Edward came to the shed. He was a kind little engine and felt sorry for Thomas. I've got some trucks to take home tomorrow, he told him. If you take them instead, I'll push coaches in the yard. Thank you, said Thomas. That will be nice. So they asked their drivers next morning, and when they said yes, Thomas ran happily to find the trucks. Now, trucks are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they are doing. They don't listen to their engine, and when he stops, they bump into each other, screaming, Oh, 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 whatever is happening! And, I'm sorry to say, they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about trucks. He warned Thomas to be careful, but Thomas was too excited to listen. The shunter fastened the coupling, and when the signal dropped, Thomas was ready. The guard blew his whistle. Peep, peep! answered Thomas, and started off. But the trucks weren't ready. Oh, 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 oh! They screamed as their couplings tightened. Wait, Thomas, wait! But Thomas wouldn't wait. Come on, come on, he puffed. And the trucks grumbled slowly out of the siding, 
onto the main line. Thomas was happy. Come along, come along, he puffed. All right, don't fuss, all right, don't fuss, grumbled the trucks. They clattered through stations and rumbled over bridges. Thomas whistled, peep, peep, and they rushed through the tunnel in which Henry had been shut up. Then they came to the top of the hill where Gordon had stuck. Steady now, steady, warned the driver, and he shut off steam and began to put on the brakes. We're stopping, we're stopping, called Thomas. No, 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 answered the trucks and bumped into each other. Go on, go on. And before his driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind him. Poor Thomas tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing, stop pushing, he hissed. But the trucks would not stop. Go on, go on, they giggled in their silly way. He was glad when they got to the bottom. Then he saw in front the place where they had to stop. Oh dear, what shall I do? They rattled through the station, and luckily the line was clear as they swerved into the goods yard. Oh, oh groaned Thomas, as his brakes held fast and he skidded along the rails. I must stop, and he shut his eyes tight. When he opened them, he saw he'd stopped just in front of the buffers, and there watching him was the fat director. What are you doing here, Thomas? He asked sternly. I've brought Edward's trucks, Thomas answered. Why did you come so fast? I didn't mean to. I was pushed, said Thomas sadly. Haven't you pulled trucks before? No. Then you've a lot to learn about trucks, little Thomas. They're silly things and must be kept in their place. After pushing them about here for a few weeks, you'll know almost as much about them as Edward. Then you'll be a really useful engine. Thomas and the Breakdown Train Every day the fat director came to the station to catch his train, and he always said hello to Thomas. There were lots of trucks in the yard, different ones came in every day, and Thomas had to push and pull them into their right places. He worked hard, he knew now that he wasn't so clever as he had thought. Besides, the fat director had been kind to him, and he wanted to learn all about trucks so as to be a really useful engine. But on a siding, by themselves, were some trucks that Thomas was told he mustn't touch. It was a small coach, some flat trucks, and two queer things his driver called cranes. That's the breakdown train, he said. When there's an accident, the workmen get into the coach and the engine takes them quickly to help the hurt people and to clear and mend the line. The cranes are for lifting heavy things like engines and coaches and trucks. One day, Thomas was in the yard when he heard an engine whistling, help, help, and a goods train came rushing through much too fast. The engine, a new one called James, was frightened. His brake blocks were on fire, and smoke and sparks streamed out on each side. They're pushing me! They're pushing me! he panted. On, 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 on! laughed the trucks, and still whistling, help, help, poor James disappeared under a bridge. I'd like to teach those trucks a lesson, said Thomas the Tank Engine. Presently, a bell rang in the signal box, and a man came running. James is off the line! The breakdown train! Quickly! he shouted. So Thomas was coupled on, the workmen jumped into their coach, and off they went. Thomas worked his hardest. Hurry, 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 he puffed, and this time he wasn't pretending to be like Gordon. He really meant it. Bother those trucks and their tricks, he thought. I hope poor James isn't hurt. They found James and the trucks at a bend in the line. The brake van and the last few trucks were on the rails, but the front ones were piled in a heap. James was in a field with a cow looking at him, and his driver and fireman were feeling him all over to see if he was hurt. Never mind, James, they said. It wasn't your fault. It was those wooden brakes they gave you. We always said they were no good. Thomas pushed the breakdown train alongside. Then he pulled the unhurt trucks out of the way. Oh dear, oh dear, they groaned. Serves you right, serves you right, puffed Thomas crossly. When the men put other trucks on the line, he pulled them away too. He was hard at work puffing backwards and forwards all the afternoon. This'll teach you a lesson, this'll teach you a lesson, he told the trucks. And they answered, yes it will, yes it will, in a sad, groany, creaky sort of voice. They left the broken trucks and mended the line. Then, with two cranes, they put James back on the rails. He tried to move, but he couldn't, so Thomas helped him back to the shed. The fat director was waiting anxiously for them. Well, Thomas, he said kindly, I've heard all about it, and I'm very pleased with you. You're a really useful engine. James shall have some proper brakes and a new coat of paint. And you shall have a branch line all to yourself. Oh, sir, said Thomas happily. Now Thomas is as happy as can be. He has a branch line all to himself, and puffs proudly backwards and forwards with two coaches all day. He is never lonely, because there is always some engine to talk to at the junction. 
Edward and Henry stop quite often and tell him the news. Gordon is always in a hurry and does not stop, but he never forgets to say poop poop to little Thomas, and Thomas always whistles peep peep in return. The Railway Series number three, James the Red Engine. Dear friends of Edward, Gordon, Henry and Thomas, thank you for your kind letters. Here is the new book for which you asked. James, who crashed into the story of Thomas the Tank Engine, settles down and becomes a useful engine. We are nationalised now, but the same engines still work the region. I am glad, too, to tell you that the Fat Director, who understands our friend's ways, is still in charge, but is now the Fat Controller. I hope you will enjoy this book too. The Author James and the Top Hat James was a new engine who lived at a station at the other end of the line. He had two small wheels in front and six driving wheels behind. They weren't as big as Gordon's, and they weren't as small as Thomas's. You're a special mixed traffic engine, the Fat Controller told him. You'll be able to pull coaches or trucks quite easily. But trucks are not easy things to manage, and on his first day they had pushed him down a hill into a field. He had been ill after the accident, but now he had new brakes and a shining coat of red paint. The red paint will cheer you up after your accident, said the Fat Controller kindly. You are to pull coaches today, and Edward shall help you. They went together to find the coaches. Be careful with the coaches, James, said Edward. They don't like being bumped. Trucks are silly and noisy. They need to be bumped and taught to behave. But coaches get cross and will pay you out. They took the coaches to the platform and were both coupled on in front. The Fat Controller, the Station Master, and some little boys all came to admire James's shining rods and red paint. James was pleased. I am a really splendid engine, he thought, and suddenly let off steam. Weeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Come on, come on, come on, he puffed, and the coaches, squeaking and groaning in protest, clattered over the points onto the open line. Hurry, 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 puffed James. You're going too fast, you're going too fast, said the coaches. And indeed, they were going so fast that they swayed from side to side. James laughed and tried to go faster, but the coaches wouldn't let him. We're going to stop, we're going to stop, we're going to stop, they said, and James found himself going slower and slower. What's the matter, James asked his driver. The brakes are hard on, leaking the pipe most likely. You've banged the coaches enough to make a leak in anything. The guard and the driver got down and looked at the brake pipes all along the train. At last, they found a hole where rough treatment had made a joint work loose. How shall we mend it, said the guard. James's driver thought for a moment. We'll do it with newspapers and a leather bootlace. Well, where is the bootlace coming from? Asked the guard. We haven't one. Ask the passengers, said the driver. So the guard made everyone get out. Has anybody got a leather bootlace? He asked. They all said no, except one man in a bowler hat, whose name was Jeremiah Jobling, who tried to hide his feet. You have a leather bootlace there, I see, sir, said the guard. Please give it to me. I won't, said Jeremiah Jobling. Then, said the guard sternly, I'm afraid this train will just stop where it is. Then the passengers all told the guard, the driver, and the fireman what a bad railway it was. But the guard climbed into his van, and the driver and fireman made James let off steam. So they all told Jeremiah Jobling he was a bad man instead. At last, he gave them his laces. The driver tied a pad of newspapers tightly around the hull, and James was able to pull the train. But he was a sadder, and a wiser James, and took care never to bump coaches again. Troublesome Trucks James did not see the Fat Controller for several days. They left James alone in the shed, and did not even allow him to go out and push coaches and trucks in the yard. Oh dear, he thought sadly, I'll never be allowed out any more. I shall have to stay in this shed for always, and no one will ever see my red coat again. Oh dear, oh dear. James began to cry. Just then, the Fat Controller came along. I see you are sorry, James, he said. I hope now that you will be a better engine. You have given me a lot of trouble. People are laughing at my railway, and I do not like that at all. I'm very sorry, sir, said James. I will try hard to behave. That's a good engine, said the Fat Controller kindly. I want you to pull some trucks for me. Run along and find them. So James puffed happily away. Here are your trucks, James, said the little tank engine. Have you got some bootlaces ready? And he ran off laughing rudely. Oh, 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 said the trucks as James backed down hard on them. We want a proper engine, not a red monster. James took no notice and started as soon as the guard was ready. Come along, come along, he puffed. We won't, we won't, screamed the trucks. But James didn't care and he pulled the screeching trucks sternly out of the yard. The trucks tried hard to make him give up, but he still kept on. Sometimes their brakes would slip on and sometimes their axles would run hot. Each time, they would have to stop and put the trouble right, and each time James would start again, determined not to let the trucks beat him. Give up, give up, you can't pull us, you can't, you can't, called the trucks. I can, and I will, I can and I will, puffed James. And slowly but surely, he pulled them along the line. At last, they saw Gordon's hill ahead. Look out for trouble, James, warned his driver. We'll go fast and get them up before they know it. Don't let them stop you. So James went faster, and they were soon halfway up the hill. I'm doing it, I'm doing it, he panted. But it was hard work. Will the top never come, he thought, when with a sudden jerk, it all came easier. I've done it! I've done it! He puffed triumphantly. Hurrah, he thought. It's easy now. But his driver shut off steam. They've done it again, he said. We've left our tail behind. The last ten trucks were running backwards down the hill. The coupling had snapped. But the guard was brave. Very carefully and cleverly, he made them stop. Then he got out and walked down the line with his red flag. That's why it was easy, said James as he backed the other trucks carefully down. What silly things trucks are. There might have been an accident. Meanwhile, the guard stopped Edward, who was pulling three coaches. Shall I help you, James? called Edward. No, thank you, answered James. I'll pull them myself. Good. Don't let them beat you. So James got ready. Then, with a peep peep, he was off. I can do it. I can do it, he puffed. He pulled and puffed as hard as he could. Peep, 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 peep. You're doing well, whistled Edward, as James slowly struggled up the hill, with clouds of smoke and steam pouring from his funnel. I've done it. I've done it. He panted and disappeared over the top. They reached their station safely. James was resting in the yard when Edward puffed by with a cheerful peep, peep. Then, walking towards them across the rails, 
James saw the fat controller. Oh dear, what will he say? He asked himself sadly. But the fat controller was smiling. I was in Edward's train and saw everything, he said. You've made the most troublesome trucks on the line behave. After that, you deserve to keep your red coat. James and the Express Sometimes, Gordon and Henry slept in James's shed, and they would talk of nothing but bootlaces. James would talk about engines who got shut up in tunnels and stuck on hills, but they wouldn't listen, and went on talking and laughing. You talk too much, little James, Gordon would say. A fine, strong engine like me has something to talk about. I'm the only engine who can pull the express. When I'm not there, they need two engines. Think of that. I've pulled expresses for years, and I've never once lost my way. I seem to know the right line by instinct said Gordon proudly. Every wise engine knows, of course, that the signalman works the points to make engines run on the right lines, but Gordon was so proud that he had forgotten. Wake up, James, he said next morning. It's nearly time for the express. What are you doing? Odd jobs? Ah, well, we all have to begin somewhere, don't we? Run along now and get my coaches. Don't be late now. James went to get Gordon's coaches. They were now all shining with lovely new paint. He was careful not to bump them, and they followed him smoothly into the station, singing happily. We're going away, we're going away. I wish I was going with you, said James. I should love to pull the express and go flying along the line. He left them in the station and went back to the yard, just as Gordon, with much noise and blowing of steam, backed onto the train. The fat controller was on the train with other important people, and, as soon as they heard the guard's whistle, Gordon started. Look at me now, look at me now, he puffed, and the coaches glided after him out of the station. Poop, poop, poop. Goodbye, little James. See you tomorrow. James watched the train disappear around a curve and then went back to work. He pushed some trucks into their proper sidings and went to fetch the coaches for another train. He brought the coaches to the platform and was just being uncoupled when he heard a mournful, quiet shush, shush, shush. And there was Gordon, trying to sidle into the station without being noticed. Hello, Gordon. Is it tomorrow? asked James. Gordon didn't answer. He just let off steam feebly. Did you lose your way, Gordon? No, he was lost for me, he answered crossly. I was switched off the main line onto the loop. I had to go all round and back again. Perhaps it was instinct, said James brightly. Meanwhile, all the passengers hurried to the booking office. We want our money back, they shouted. Everyone was making a noise, but the fat controller climbed on a trolley and blew the guard's whistle so loudly that they all stopped to look at him. Then he promised them a new train at once. Gordon can't do it, he said. Will you pull it for us, James? Yes, sir. I'll try. So James was coupled on, and everyone got in again. Do your best, James, said the fat controller kindly. Just then, the whistle blew, and he had to run to get in. Come along, come along, puffed James. You're pulling us well, you're pulling us well, sang the coaches. Hurry, 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 puffed James. Stations and bridges flashed by. The passengers leaned out of the windows and cheered, and they soon reached the terminus. Everyone said thank you to James. Well done, said the fat controller. Would you like to pull the express sometimes? Yes, please, answered James happily. Next day when James came by, Gordon was pushing trucks in the yard. I like some quiet work for a change, he said. I'm teaching these trucks manners. You did well with those coaches, I hear. Good, we'll show them. And he gave his trucks a bump, making them cry, oh, 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 oh. James and Gordon are now good friends. James sometimes takes the express to give Gordon a rest. Gordon never talks about bootlaces, and they have both quite agreed on the subject of trucks. The Railway Series, number four. Tank Engine Thomas again. Dear friends, here is news from Thomas's branch line. It is clearly no ordinary line, and life on it is far from dull. Thomas asks me to say that, if you are ever in the region, you must be sure to visit him and travel on his line. They will never have seen anything like it, he says proudly. I know I haven't. The author. Thomas and the Guard Thomas the Tank Engine is very proud of his branch line. He thinks it is the most important part of the whole railway. He has two coaches. They are old and need new paint, but he loves them very much. He calls them Annie and Clarabelle. Annie can only take passengers, but Clarabelle can take passengers, luggage, and the guard. As they run backwards and forwards along the line, Thomas sings them little songs, and Annie and Clarabelle sing too. When Thomas starts from a station, he sings... Oh, come along, we're rather late. Oh, come along, we're rather late. And the coaches sing, we're coming along, we're coming along. They don't mind what Thomas says to them, because they know he is trying to please the fat controller. And they know, too, that if Thomas is cross, he is not cross with them. 
he is cross with the engines on the main line, who have made him late. One day they had to wait for Henry's train. It was late. Thomas was getting crosser and crosser. How can I run my line properly if Henry is always late? He doesn't realise that the fat controller depends on me. And he whistled impatiently. At last Henry came. Where have you been, lazybones? Asked Thomas crossly. Oh dear, my system is out of order. No one understands my case. You don't know what I suffer, moaned Henry. Rubbish, said Thomas. You're too fat, you need exercise. Lots of people with piles of luggage got out of Henry's train, and they all climbed into Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas had to wait till they were ready. At last, the guard blew his whistle, and Thomas started at once. The guard turned round to jump into his van, tripped over an old lady's umbrella, and fell flat on his face. By the time he had picked himself up, Thomas and Annie and Clarabelle were steaming out of the station. Come along, come along, puffed Thomas, but Clarabelle didn't want to come. I've lost my nice guard, I've lost my nice guard, she sobbed. Annie tried to tell Thomas, we haven't a guard, we haven't a guard. But he was hurrying and wouldn't listen. Oh, come along, oh, come along, he puffed impatiently. Annie and Clarabelle tried to put on their brakes, but they couldn't without the guard. Where is our guard? Where is our guard? They cried. Thomas didn't stop till they came to a signal. Bother that signal, said Thomas. What's the matter? I don't know, said his driver. The guard will tell us in a minute. They waited and waited, but the guard didn't come. Peep, 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 peep. Where's the guard? whistled Thomas. We've left him behind, sobbed Annie and Clarabelle together. The driver, fireman and the passengers looked, and there was the guard running as fast as he could along the line, with his flags in one hand and his whistle in the other. Everybody cheered him. He was very hot, so he sat down and had a drink, and told them all about it. I'm very sorry, Mr. Guard, said Thomas. It wasn't your fault, Thomas. It was the old lady's umbrella. Look, the signal is down. Let's make up for lost time. Annie and Clarabelle were so pleased to have their guard again, that they sang, as fast as you like, as fast as you like, to Thomas, all the way, and they reached the end of the line quicker than ever before. Thomas Goes Fishing Thomas's branch line had a station by a river. As he rumbled over the bridge, he would see people fishing. Sometimes they stood quietly by their lines, sometimes they were actually jerking fish out of the water. Thomas often wanted to stay and watch, but his driver said, No, what would the fat controller say if we were late? Thomas thought it would be lovely to stop by the river. I should like to go fishing, he said to himself longingly. Every time he met another engine, he would say, I want to fish. They all answered, engines don't go fishing. Silly stick in the muds, he would snort impatiently. Thomas generally had to take in water at the station by the river. One day, he stopped as usual, and his fireman put the pipe from the water tower in his tank. Then he turned the tap, but it was out of order, and no water came. Bother, said Thomas. I am thirsty. Never mind, said his driver. We'll get some water from the river. They found a bucket and some rope, and went to the bridge. Then the driver let the bucket down to the water. The bucket was old, and had five holes, so they had to fill it, pull it up, and empty it into Thomas's tank as quickly as they could. There's a hole in my bucket, dear Liza, dear Liza, sang the fireman. Never mind about Liza, said the driver. You empty that bucket before you spill the water over me. They finished at last. That's good, that's good, puffed Thomas as he started, and Annie and Clarabelle ran happily behind. They puffed along the valley and were in the tunnel when Thomas began to feel a pain in his boiler, while steam hissed from his safety valve in an alarming way. There's too much steam, said his driver, and his fireman opened the tap in the feed pipe to let more water into the boiler, but none came. Oh dear, groaned Thomas, I'm going to burst, I'm going to burst. They damped down his fire and struggled on. I've got such a pain, I've got such a pain, Thomas hissed. Just outside the last station they stopped, uncoupled Annie and Clarabelle, and ran Thomas, who was still hissing fit to burst, on a siding right out of the way. Then, while the guard telephoned for an engine inspector, and the fireman was putting out the fire, the driver wrote notices in large letters, which he hung on Thomas in front and behind. Danger. Keep away. Soon the inspector and the fat controller arrived. Cheer up, Thomas, he said. We'll soon put you right. The driver told them what had happened. So the feed pipe's blocked, said the inspector. I'll just look in the tanks. He climbed up and peered in. Then he came down. Excuse me, sir, he said to the fat controller. Please look in the tank and tell me what you see. Certainly, inspector. He clambered up, looked in, and nearly fell off in surprise. Inspector? he whispered. Can you see fish? Gracious goodness me, said the fat controller. How did the fish get their driver? 
Thomas's driver scratched his head. We must have fished them from the river, and he told them about the bucket. The Fat Controller laughed. Well, Thomas, so you and your driver have been fishing, but fish don't suit you, and we must get them out. So the driver and fireman fetched rods and nets, and they all took turns at fishing in Thomas's tank, while the Fat Controller told them how to do it. When they had caught all the fish, the station master gave them some potatoes, the driver borrowed a frying pan, while the fireman made a fire beside the line and did the cooking. Then they all had a lovely picnic supper of fish and chips. Mmm, that was good, said the Fat Controller as he finished his share, but fish don't suit you, Thomas, so you mustn't do it again. No, sir, I won't, said Thomas sadly. Engines don't go fishing, it's too uncomfortable. Thomas, Terence, and the Snow Autumn was changing the leaves from green to brown. The fields were changing too, from yellow stubble to brown earth. As Thomas puffed along, he heard the chug 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 of a tractor at work. One day, stopping for a signal, he saw the tractor close by. Hello, said the tractor. I'm Terence, I'm ploughing. I'm Thomas, I'm pulling a train. What ugly wheels you've got. They're not ugly, they're caterpillars, said Terence. I can go anywhere, I don't need rails. I don't want to go anywhere, said Thomas huffily. I like my rails, thank you. Thomas often saw Terence working, but though he whistled, Terence never answered. Winter came, and with it dark, heavy clouds full of snow. I don't like it, said Thomas's driver. A heavy fall is coming. I hope it doesn't stop us. Pooh, said Thomas, seeing the snow melt on the rails. Soft stuff, nothing to it. And he puffed on, feeling cold, but confident. They finished their journey safely, but the country was covered, and the rails were two dark lines standing out in the white snow. You'll need your snow plough for the next journey, Thomas, said his driver. Pooh, snow is silly soft stuff. It won't stop me. Listen to me, his driver replied. We are going to fix your snow plough on, and I want no nonsense, please. The snow plough was heavy and uncomfortable, and made Thomas cross. He shook it, and he banged it, and when they got back it was so damaged that the driver had to take it off. You're a very naughty engine, said his driver, as he shut the shed door that night. Next morning, both driver and fireman came early, and worked hard to mend the snow plough, but they couldn't make it fit properly. It was time for the first train. Thomas was pleased. I shan't have to wear it, I shan't have to wear it. He puffed to Annie and Clarabelle. I hope it's all right. I hope it's all right. They whispered anxiously to each other. The driver was anxious too. It's not bad here, he said to the fireman, but it's sure to be deep in the valley. It was snowing again when Thomas started, but the rails were not covered. Silly soft stuff. Silly soft stuff, he puffed. I didn't need that stupid old thing yesterday. I shan't today. Snow can't stop me. And he rushed into the tunnel, thinking how clever he was. At the other end, he saw a heap of snow fallen from the sides of the cutting. Silly old snow, said Thomas, and charged it. Cinders and ashes, said Thomas. I'm stuck. And he was. Back, Thomas, back, said his driver. Thomas tried, but his wheels spun and he couldn't move. More snow fell and piled up around him. The guard went back for help, while the driver, fireman and passengers tried to dig the snow away. But as fast as they dug, more snow slipped down until Thomas was nearly buried. Oh, my wheels and coupling rods, said Thomas sadly. I shall have to stop here till I'm frozen. What a silly engine I am. And Thomas began to cry. At last, a tooting in the distance told them a bus had come for the passengers. Then Terence chugged through the tunnel. He pulled the empty coaches away and came back for Thomas. Thomas's wheels were clear, but still spun helplessly when he tried to move. Terence tugged and slipped and slipped and tugged, and at last dragged Thomas into the tunnel. Thank you, Terence. Your caterpillars are splendid, said Thomas gratefully. I hope you'll be sensible now, Thomas, said his driver severely. I'll try, said Thomas, as he puffed home. Thomas and Bertie One day, Thomas was waiting at the junction, when a bus came into the yard. Hello, said Thomas. Who are you? I'm Bertie. Who are you? I'm Thomas. I run this line. See, you're Thomas. Ha, ah, I remember now. You stuck in the snow. I took your passengers and Terence pulled you out. I've come to help you with your passengers today. Help me, said Thomas crossly, going bluer than ever and letting off steam. I can go faster than you anyway. You can't. I can. I'll race you, said Bertie. Their drivers agreed. The station master said, are you ready? Go. And they were off. Thomas never could go fast at first and Bertie drew in front. Thomas was running well, but he did not hurry. Why don't you go fast? Why don't you go fast? called Annie and Clarabel anxiously. Wait and see, wait and see, is Thomas. He's a long way ahead, a long way ahead, they wailed. But Thomas didn't mind. He remembered the level crossing. 
There was Bertie, fuming at the gates, while they sailed gaily through. Goodbye, Bertie, called Thomas. The road left the railway and went through a village, so they couldn't see Bertie. They stopped at the station. Peep, 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 quickly please, called Thomas. Everybody got out quickly, the guard whistled, and off they went. Come along, come along, sang Thomas. We're coming along, we're coming along, sang Annie and Clarabel. Hurry, 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 panted Thomas, looking straight ahead. Then he whistled shrilly in horror, for Bertie was crossing the bridge over the railway, tooting triumphantly on his horn. Oh dearie me, oh dearie me, groaned Thomas. He's a long way in front, a long way in front, wailed Annie and Clarabel. Steady, Thomas, said his driver. We'll beat Bertie yet. We'll beat Bertie yet, we'll beat Bertie yet, echoed Annie and Clarabel. We'll do it, we'll do it, panted Thomas bravely. No oh, bother, there's a station. As he stopped, he heard a toot. Goodbye, Thomas, you must be tired. Sorry I can't stop. We buses have to work, you know. Goodbye. The next station was by the river. They got there quickly, but the signal was up. Oh dear, thought Thomas. We've lost. But he felt better after a drink. Then James rattled through with a good train, and the signal dropped, showing the line was clear. Hurrah, we're off, hurrah, we're off, puffed Thomas gaily. As they rumbled over the bridge, they heard an impatient toot-toot, and there was Bertie waiting at the red light, while cars and lorries crossed the narrow bridge in the opposite direction. Road and railway ran up the valley side by side, a stream tumbling between them. Thomas had not crossed the bridge when Bertie started with a roar and soon shot ahead. Excited passengers in the train and bus cheered and shouted across the valley. Now Thomas reached his full speed, and foot by foot, yard by yard he gained, till they were running level. Bertie tried hard, but Thomas was too fast. Slowly but surely he drew ahead, till whistling triumphantly, he plunged into the tunnel, leaving Bertie toiling far behind. I've done it, I've done it, panted Thomas in the tunnel. We've done it, hooray, we've done it, hooray, chanted Annie and Clarabel. And whistling proudly, they whooshed out of the tunnel into the last station. The passengers gave Thomas three cheers and told the station master and the porters all about the race. When Bertie came in, they gave him three cheers too. Well done, Thomas, said Bertie. That was fun, but to beat you over that hill, I should have to grow wings and be an aeroplane. Thomas and Bertie now keep each other very busy. Bertie finds people in the villages who want to go by train and takes them to Thomas, while Thomas brings people to the station for Bertie to take home. They often talk about their race, but Bertie's passengers don't like being bounced like peas in a frying pan, and the fat controller has warned Thomas what happens to engines who race at dangerous speeds. So although, between you and me, they would like to have another race, I don't think they ever will.